and welcome to lecture number five in the course of advanced robotics. In the last class I talked about uh, DH parameters that is how to assign the z-axis and then the x-axis to find the relation between two frames in three-dimensional space and we also saw that there are four parameters uh, a, alpha, d and theta uh, using which we make the DH parameter table and find the respective transformation matrices. So when you multiply all the transformation matrices Okay, so today we'll talk about DH parameters uh, and revise what very quickly what we had done in the last class. I need to revise because DH parameters are very, very important and you should be very, very clear as to how to assign the axis and then find the DH parameters because based on that only we find our transformation matrices. Okay, so uh, very quickly revising. Suppose we have uh, an axis a link like this in three dimensional space. So this is one link and there is a corresponding link on the other side. Okay, so on the other side we have another link which is the next link. Okay, so the DS parameters basically tells us or gives us a systematic way of assigning axis. So the first thing that we do is to assign our z-axis. So this is my z-axis. Let me call this uh, uh, the zi minus 1 axis. Okay. And this is my zi axis. So it is similar to saying this is uh, zi then the next one is zi plus 1. Okay, so it is zi minus 1 and zi. Then uh, xi is defined as the shortest distance between the two frame, between the two z-axis. So this is my xi minus 1 and corresponding to the next and this is the next xi axis. Okay. Now we want to see that how many transformations are required to align the zi minus 1 axis with the zi axis okay. or the frame i minus 1 to the frame i. Okay. So if I want to go from frame i minus 1 to frame i or I want what is the relation between uh, these frames i minus 1 and i, i minus 1 and frame i. Okay. So what we do is the first thing that we see is the z axis are not z i minus 1 and z i are not parallel to each other okay, or they are not aligned. So what we do is we draw this axis uh, z i parallel to, so I draw my z i axis here. So this is my axis uh, zi axis here. I draw a line which is parallel to the zi axis. Now we see that there is an angle alpha between them. So I rotate the angle zi minus 1 by an angle alpha and align it, make it parallel to the zi axis. So now this and this are parallel. Okay. Then what we do is we move. So the first thing that I did, I used an angle alpha. Next what we do is we move the origin from here to there by a distance ai. So my next transformation is a or ai, let's call it a only. Okay. And after that, what we see is that the zi minus 1 axis has come here and the xi minus 1 is here. Okay, So there is an angle between the xi minus 1 and the uh, xi axis. So xi is on this side. Okay, You can see the xi axis which is here. That is my xi axis. So there is an angle. So I rotate xi minus 1 and align it with xi. Then what happens is this and this becomes parallel. So a alpha theta and then I move the origin of the i plus 1th frame i minus 1 frame from here to there and by a distance of t okay so we see that there are four parameters alpha a theta and d which are uh, which are called the dh parameters okay now using the dh parameters we make the dh table and then we find the relationship between one axis to its previous axis now let us look at uh, a very simple example which we did in the last class I'll just very quickly revise because this part is very very important so it's very important that we understand this very clearly so this is one act a three degree of freedom system I'm going to assign the z-axis so we can assign the z-axis as the axis of rotation or translation so that 0 and z1 is here z2 is here and z3 is there the x-axis the first x and 0 can come here the next one goes here x1 x2 and x3 Okay, now I make my dh parameter table a alpha d and theta. So this is for uh, joint one, two, and three. And what we get is uh, the axis zero and one. The origins are the same, and the z axis are the same axis. So there is no distance here. There is no angle, no distance, and the variable is theta one. Now, in case of the uh, relation between one and two, then we see that there is a distance. L1, let's say there's a distance L1 here and L2 which are the link lengths. So L1 is here. This is 0, 0 and that's theta 2. Now the relation between 3 and 2 axis is that uh, there's a distance of L2 
between the z-axis z3 and z2 there is no angle between them uh, between the z-axis and there is no distance between the x-axis because they're intersecting and this is my theta 3 okay now what we do with this is uh, or just uh, revising what we said in the previous uh, uh, previous slide that there are these four parameters a alpha d and theta so each of them this is a rotation transformation this is a translation transformation this is a rotation again and that's a translation again okay so if i multiply all these matrices together we get a generalized matrix and the generalized matrix looks uh, something like this i had written in my last class let me just uh, write it very quickly here so the generalized matrix let me write the generalized matrix here so t i minus 1 and i is equal to cos of cos theta minus sine theta 0 a this is sine theta cos alpha cos theta cos alpha minus sine alpha then minus sine alpha d the third is sine theta sine alpha cos theta sine alpha cos alpha cos alpha d and this is 0 0 0 1 okay now this basically means this gives us relation between the i to the i minus 1 at frame okay so when i'm going from the uh, from the end effector to the base frame what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the dh parameter table so i'll use this table take each row of the table put it in this uh, generalized matrix and get each of our uh, respective transformation matrices so Basically, what we need is if I want to find T3 to T0, I need these three matrices 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and sorry, 0 to, sorry, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3, right? And I multiply them all out. So each of this, how do I get? I get it by looking at the first row, the second row, and then the third row, okay? So I take the values of A alpha D theta, put it in the generalized matrix, uh, which is given here, and then get the corresponding uh, uh, transformation matrix. So this is a very simple example, so I can write it very easily. So T01 is equal to, the transformation would be, taking the first row will be cos 1 minus sin 1, sin 1 cos 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 0, and this is 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's the first one. The second one is T1 to 2, which is given by cos 2 minus sine 2, sine 2 cos 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 0, 1. Now there is a distance of L1 in the x direction. This is 0 and 0. Okay. Similarly, if I take the third row and put it, what would I get? I'm going to get T2 to 3, which is equal to cos 3 minus sine 3, sine 3 cos 3. 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 this is l2 that is 0 0 and that's one okay. now when i multiply them all together what what do i get i get this matrix uh, uh, t 0 to 3 so in the last class i had uh, done this please refer to that i'm going through it very quickly i'm just revising so what i'm going to get is t 0 to 3 which will give me cos 1 2 3 minus sine 1 2 3 sine 1 2 3 cos 1 2 3 0 0 1 0 0 this is 0, 0, 0. This is L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1, 2. This is L1 sin 1 plus L2 sin 1, 2. This is 0, that's 1. So this is the full transformation matrix. That means for every manipulator, we have to first assign the axis, the z-axis, then the x-axis, write down the DS parameter table, then use this generalized matrix, get each of the matrices, taking it from the end effector to the base, multiply them all out, and you get the final matrix. Okay? Now, I also explained the physical interpretation of the physical meaning of this. The physical meaning of this is, this is very, very important. We should be very clear on this. This part is the rotation part. So the rotation part gives the rotation of the X uh, of the end effector frame. Let's call it XE with respect to X0, the total rotation. And this gives us the total motion of the, or the distance between the origins in the X direction, Y direction, and Z direction origins of what distance between origins of the last frame the nth frame to that of the zero frame okay and we can go back and verify that very easily so when i look at the total uh, rotation of the third axis that is my third 
origin is here x3 is that side then you can see that the total rotation is theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 okay, that is what we are getting and it's a rotation about z okay all of them are rotations about z and the total distance this has moved so this is my del x that's my del y okay and it doesn't move in the z direction because uh, it's a planar uh, manipulator okay so let's look at a few more examples so please note this is the generalized transformation matrix which we are going to use consistently in finding the relationship or the transformation matrix which relates one frame to the previous frame. Now in a computer program, suppose you have six degrees of freedom or eight degrees of freedom okay, uh, for a large manipulator. Basically we have to make the DH parameter table. Now this can be looked upon as a matrix. Now in this matrix, each of this is a array, right? So what the computer program would do, it will take one array at a time, put it into this generalized matrix, get the first one, okay, then it will take the second row. Uh, okay, so next what it's going to do is it's going to take the second row. First it will get take this one, put it into the generalized matrix and get this one. Okay. Then it takes the second row, puts it in the generalized matrix and gets this, then takes the third, gets this, then multiplies them all out and uh, you get the final transformation matrix. Now matrix manipulation is very easy using MATLAB. So it is very easy to write a program in MATLAB to compute all of this, okay? Because these are these are all matrices, okay? So now let's look at another example. Uh, let's look at uh, the DH parameter table for another manipulator. Let's look at uh, let's talk about this Scala robot. The Scala robot is selective compliance assembly robot arm. Okay, so selective se selective compliance assembly robot arm okay so this is a, a robot arm which has a structure something like this there are this has four degrees of freedom and it has a three revolute joints and one prismatic joint Now let us look and try to understand when this manipulator moves, how does it uh, move or how does it move in uh, 3D, okay. Which are the various joints? So this one is the first revolute axis, which is this one, it can rotate about that. So that's my first revolute axis. The second revolute axis is here, this is my second revolute axis. The third axis is a prismatic joint, which is given here. So this joint, if I call this uh, link one, link two and link three, link one and link two are uh, revolute joints or joint one joint two are revolute joint three is prismatic which is d3 now the fourth one is also a rotation like this about that wrist okay so that is where the four degrees of freedom come i hope you can uh, visualize this now if i draw the top view of this so this is the side view let's say this is my side view if i draw the top view of this it'll look something like this okay it'll, be, it'll look like a two link manipulator so this is my top view which means if I see from here, this is what I get. Now, uh, this behaves like a two-link manipulator. Okay. So when it moves, you can imagine that this can rotate like this, okay, and come till here, and this full thing can rotate, so it can come like that. Okay. And when the full two joints rotate together, you get an outer circle. We had done the work volume of this, so there will be an outer circle and an inner circle. So this will be the work volume of this uh, SCARA robot. Okay. Now, we want to assign the DH parameters of this uh, manipulator. So first of all, following the DH parameters uh, convention, we first assign the z-axis. So this is my first z0 and z1. So that's z0 and z1. The next one is a z2. Okay. The third one is a z3. It is here also, z3. And the fourth one is a z4. Okay. So revolute, revolute, prismatic, and uh, you, I hope you can imagine when the third joint moves, it goes up and down because the prismatic axis. And the fourth one is a rotation of the wrist. Now next, we, let us assign our x-axis. So I assign x0 here. So x0 and x1 I assign here. Now please note, I could have assigned x0 here also at this point, but only a link length will come. So just to simplify matters, I'm putting x0 and x1 at this point, okay? And I'm putting uh, x2, in this direction x3 is here and x4 is there okay. all the z-axis are parallel so it's very simple x is the shortest distance between the z-axis okay. 
now let's write our dh parameter table let's put on the uh, the link lengths so this link length let's call it l1 this is l2 again note uh, distance from here to here is uh, l4 this is a fixed distance okay now the fourth link can go up and down by how much distance by this much distance that's my d3 okay so now please note that i have simplified a lot of things i have I have ignored the thickness here, I have ignored the thickness there. I put my origin such that this thickness becomes equal to zero. Okay. So that is just to simplify. Okay. But in the real case, you can assign one axis origin here, one here, and one there, and consider the thickness also. Okay. Okay. So let us now write our DH parameter table. So it is A alpha D and theta, A alpha D and theta. Now uh, the first one is one, two, three, four. It's a four degree of freedom system. Okay. And as I said in the last class, it's a good idea to write down this. It's a distance between Z, angle between Z. This is a distance between X and this is an angle between X. So you don't make a mistake. So frame zero and one, one and two, two and three, three and four. So zero and one, uh, the origins are the same. The origins are the same point. The Z axis is the same and the X axis is also initially the same. So if the first joint rotates, what will happen? If you look at the top view, this is my x0 and x1 in top view. So when link one rotates, it will come here. This angle will change. So x1 will come here and x0 will remain there. Okay, so this is my angle theta one. I hope you can visualize in the top view. So the distance is zero, 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 and this theta one. So when link one moves, what happens is the joint angle theta one changes. Next, what is the relation between the frame 2 and the frame 1? Now you can see that the Z1 and Z2 are parallel. Okay, so there is a distance between them. Let's call this distance L1. So there's a distance of L1. And they're parallel, so there's no angle between them. The X1 and X2 are also on the same line. There's no distance between them. The simplification I've made, so this is 0. So if there was a distance between X1 and X2, then some distance will come here. Okay. Uh, some distance will come at, at this location at D. Now when link 2 moves, this is my um, x1 is going this side and this is my x2. This is my x1, right? So when link 2 moves, what changes? The angle between, so x2 will come there and x1 is still here. So what would happen is theta 2 will change. Okay, so I hope you can imagine when this joint, the joint 2 is moving, what is happening in the top view? Uh, this link is moving like this now. So what is happening? The angle between x2 and x1 is changing, which is my theta 2. Okay. Now the third axis is a prismatic axis. Now the z2 and the z3 are parallel again. So there is a distance of L2 between them. They are in the same direction. Okay. They are all pointing upwards, so there is no angle between them. They are parallel, so it's 0. Now d3 is the distance. So if you can imagine, let me draw it here. This is my the link. Okay, this is my link 3 and the origin is here of link 3. This is my x3, that's my z3. Okay, so when the link moves up and down, this will go up or it will go down. I hope you can imagine it goes up and down. By how much? By d3. Okay, so what would happen is the origin of frame 3 will move up or down with respect to origin of frame 2. Okay, and that is basically what is my, uh, the, uh, that is the, first of all, there is a, distance between z3 and z2 which is my l2 now when the x2 and the x1 so x3 is here and x2 is uh, x2 is here right so when this goes up or down what will happen is the distance between x2 and x3 will change and that distance is my d d3 so it's the prismatic axis this is my d3 there is no theta there so it's zero okay so axis 2 is fitted on link 2 axis 3 is fitted on link 3 so when link 3 is moving up and down the origins of link three uh, of origin of uh, frame three is going up and down also, okay, and that is creating the distance between x two and x three. Okay, now what about the last one? Now please note that z three is pointing upward, whereas z four is pointing downward. So z has rotated by one eighty degrees. Okay, there is, it's along the same line, so there is no distance, but it has rotated by one hundred eighty degrees uh, about the x-axis in a clockwise fashion. So it is minus of one eighty. And uh, what is the distance between the uh, the x3 and the x x4? So there is a distance of uh, L4 there. 
that is my distance here so maximum it can come till here okay so this coming till here means your x3 has come here now so the distance between x3 and x4 is l4 and this is my angle theta 3 now please note here that for alpha 3 i rotated clockwise about the x-axis by 180 degrees and z4 came down so z3 was in this direction and my x3 was in this direction so i rotated like this and z4 came there i could have also rotated this way by 180 and it will come to the same axis okay so this one can be one plus 180 or minus 180 because it's the same thing it has the same meaning whereas if you look at cos cos of plus and cos of minus is the same so whether you put 180 plus or you put 180 minus it actually doesn't mean it doesn't make any difference because uh, cos of plus 180 and cos of one minus 180 is the same well it's minus one okay so uh, you can either put 180 or minus 180 so please look at this figure and be clear why it is like that okay now that we have got our dh parameter table so this is my dh table okay next what we need to do is to write down our transformation matrix so what do we want we want zero with respect to four which is given by t uh, zero to one one to two two to three into three to four okay that will give so i need to find out this 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 how do i find out i take the first one uh, first row of this dh parameter table put it in the generalized matrix so what is the generalized matrix we have seen the generalized matrix is uh, this one okay so row by row i put it in there and i write down my uh, corresponding axis okay so uh, uh, let us uh, write that so what we get is the ds parameter table which we have just made i've just written it down there i hope it's clear how we got it so this only comes with practice so there's no other way but you have to practice and then each of this will become clear why it is like that okay okay so now let's take this row by row first i'll cast the first row then the second row then third row and the fourth row and get each of this so this corresponds to row one row two row three and row four okay so let's write down the matrices so this will become t0 to 1 which is my i take the first that is 0 0 0 theta 1 so it is cos 1 minus sine 1 sine 1 cos 1 okay and uh, this is 0 0 1 this is 0 0 0 0 0 and this is also 0 0 0 and this is 1 okay now i take the second one what is the second row it is l1 0 0 theta 2 so that's my uh, second row okay and i put it into the generalized matrix and i get t 1 to 2 which is equal to cos 2 minus sine 2 sine 2 cos 2 0 0 1 this is 0 0 0 0 0 1 now what about a a is l1 okay what about uh, d d is 0 so this this is my matrix okay now what about the third one 2 to 3 2 to 3 is uh, let's go back and see what is 2 to 3 has l2 0 d3 and theta is equal to 0 okay so this matrix this matrix is going to become there is no theta so theta is equal to 0 so cos is equal to 1 sine is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 okay similarly here cos alpha is uh, 0 so this will become 0 this has become 1 this will become 0 then this will become 0 this will be 0 this is 1 and this is uh, yeah and what about a there is no a there so this term a is let's come back here so there is no a there uh, a is l2 okay so there is an l2 here and d is equal to d3 theta is equal to 0 here okay so if you go back to the matrix wherever theta is equal to 0 this term will become 0 this will become 1 this will become 0 uh, this is cos alpha alpha is uh, 0 again so this will become 0 sine theta is 0 so here again cos theta and cos alpha so cos theta is 0 cos alpha is 0 so this will become 1 this will become 0 this is 0 because cos sine alpha is 0 this is 0 and that is 1 so essentially what you can see is that it's an identity matrix which means that the angle is not changing okay please note carefully that this is an identity matrix uh, which essentially indicates that the angle is not changing this is equal to a which is equal to l2 now d is there 
now sine alpha is 0 cos alpha is 1 so d will become equal to d3 will become will come here okay so what we get is so on the so for the a a is equal to l2 what about uh, the second term alpha this is equal to 0 and uh, d is equal to d3 okay so this is my third matrix which i've got now what about the fourth one uh, let's find t 0 to 4 so we had uh, found t 0 to 1 then 1 to 2 2 to 3 now let's look at t 0 to 4 okay now so what do we do here we basically go back to the previous uh, uh, and we see that a alpha d theta is 0 minus 180 l4 and uh, theta 3 okay so what we do is we take this uh, values and put it into the generalized matrix uh, here note that there is a d also uh, there is an l2 basically there is an l there which is l4 and there is a theta 3 and there is an alpha which is minus 180 degrees okay so please note uh, these three things which are here one is a one is minus 180 then there is an l4 and there is a, a d3 here okay so all of this combined it gives us this matrix so here let us say a l so which is equal to theta 180 degrees just to keep in mind l4 and theta 3 all of them are there okay so let us put them uh, in the matrix and what do we get let me go back so that uh, we understand very clearly how did we get this matrix here we are going to use 0 minus 180 okay l4 and theta 3 okay so uh, let me write uh, write it here very badly but uh, okay 4 to 3 so this matrix will be equal to what this matrix is going to become equal to your uh, theta 3 is here so it will become cos theta 3 and sine theta 3 alpha is 180 degrees please note that cos of minus 180 degrees is equal to minus 1 so there is a cos alpha here cos alpha here so this will become minus 1 this will become minus 1 okay because uh, because uh, cos alpha is there cos alpha here again is there so it will become minus 1 okay so please note that and then uh, your theta is equal to theta 3 okay uh, sine alpha sine alpha will become equal to 0 because uh, alpha sine of 180 is uh, 0 okay a is equal to and there is no a here a is not there d is there but sine alpha is equal to 0 again so this is this will so let us write down the matrix here okay. so keeping that in mind let's write down and keeping in mind that cos of 180 degrees is equal to minus 1 okay so what is the value that we get we get cos theta so this is going to equal to cos 3 and minus sine theta will come here as minus sine 3 okay. now uh, this is 0 and what is the fourth fourth a is also 0 okay, let me write down 0 0 0 1 okay now we write down the second row what is the second row it's uh, sine theta cos alpha sine theta and cos alpha is minus so it's a minus of sine 3 because uh, cos of 1 degrees is minus minus so and this is becoming cos 3 again cos of uh, 180 is minus so it become minus of cos 3 this will become sine alpha which is equal to 0 because sine of 180 is 0 so we finished our and the uh, the last term here is going to become sine alpha which is 0 so this will become 0 okay now what about the third row the third row we have a sine theta and a sine alpha now sine alpha as you know is a uh, 180 degrees will be 0 the second term also will be 0 because there is a sine alpha now what about cos alpha this is a minus 1 and what about the last term cos alpha it becomes uh, of l4 okay so we have finished our um, matrix the three matrices we have uh, finished the first matrix uh, was this second is this third is this and the fourth is uh, this one so how do i get my t 0 to 4 i simply multiply all of them but please note here very carefully that these terms have become minus this has become minus so this is an indication that you are rotating about z axis so this is a rotation about z okay but uh, the z is reversed okay it has become minus one so z3 was in that direction this is z4 so it is indicating that it is minus one means it has gone this side now and minus 180 degrees which is minus 
1 so it is being rotated in that direction now z4 was also in that direction if suppose z4 was there then this will be 1 only okay that means uh, the angle between alpha would be 0 and it will be plus 1 okay that's the difference between uh, the the last link which is pointing upward what i mean is that suppose you had a manipulator like this so my my scalar robot was pointing upwards now okay the previous one was pointing downward this is pointing upward if the last link is pointing upward the end effector is this side okay that is my z4 is positive okay so that is the difference between z4 being positive and z4 being this side or z4 being this side it's a minus one that's a plus one that's the difference okay so we have seen the case of the SCARA robot and we have found out all the matrices. Now we can multiply them all uh, throughout and then uh, get the final matrix which relates the, the fourth frame to the zero frame. Okay, now let's move on and look at one more example. This is another example of a manipulator. So whenever you see a manipulator, the first thing that you need to do is to try and understand uh, when it moves, what happens. So first of all, how many degrees of freedom it has? This has three degrees of freedom. So this is a 3DOF manipulator, one prismatic, two revolute. Okay. So first of all, try to note, note down where is the uh, the prismatic joint. So the prismatic joint is this one, right? This can move up and down. Okay. So this full is showing as D1. So this full piece can go up and down. This can go up or it can go down this way. The second one is here. So it can rotate about that. The third is the revolute axis, which can rotate about that. Okay. So it's a... Uh, axis which can move uh, the first is a prismatic axis then it's a revolute axis revolute axis okay now let's uh, draw the link diagram for this now the first one let me simplify it a little bit okay so this one is my first axis let's say my first axis is this is my first axis okay this is my first link and this is the other link which is sitting here and this fellow is the third one i'm just simplifying the figure or let me draw it just the way it is drawn. Uh, and there's one more sitting here. So this is one axis. This is the other axis. Let me change the color. And there is one more axis which is sitting here. Well, the drawing is not very good. And this is the third one, which is uh, here. Okay, so let's draw the uh, the axis. The z-axis is here, z0, z1. It's a pr prismatic axis, so this is my d1. Okay, the second axis is here. That is called so. This is my z0, z1. The second axis, z2, is there. That's my axis. So this is my z2 axis. The third axis is this one my z3 axis this is my z3 axis okay i've drawn the link diagram now i'm simplifying now let us say that there is a distance uh, now i have to put my x-axis so let me say that z0 and z1 are here so z0 is sitting on this link and z1 is sitting on the link which is moving so this one is my z1 this is my first link that's my zero okay and this is my uh, link number two okay and this is link number three okay so now we can say that z0, z1 is here. Let's say x0 and x1 are along this direction. For simplicity, I take x2 along that direction. And simplicity, again, I take x3 along that direction. Okay. Now we can see that there is a distance between the axis. So there is a distance here. Okay, let me call that L1. So I call this L1. Okay. And uh, there is a distance here. Which I call this L2. Okay. So I've assigned my z, z axis. I've assigned my x axis. I've simplified. I've taken care of, uh, I've not intentionally put in uh, the, I could have put my z0 here and my x0 here. I could have done that and my z1 could have been there and x1 could have been here. Okay, so when it moves, I basically get a distance division, uh, I get a distance here also. Okay, now to avoid that, I've just put z0 and z1 together at the same point, uh, at this point. Okay, but please note that uh, Z1 is, uh, sorry, Z0 is fixed and Z1 is the one that's moving. Okay. So now let's look at uh, our DH parameter table. So it's A alpha D and theta. Okay, so it is 1, 2 and 3. So the first one is a prismatic axis. 
z0 and z1 are the same axis there's no distance between them so this is zero there's no angle between them so it's zero now when z1 moves what happens is this link goes up or this link goes down that means this parameter changes okay i hope you can visualize that so this is my d1 and there's no theta so it's zero okay. now uh, let's look at the second the second axis is here okay the origin is here now if you look at uh, the distance between z1 and z2 there is a distance of l1 okay and uh, when it rotates what will happen there is no angle between them so it's zero there is no distance between the x i've simplified it so it is zero there and this is my theta one axis okay so this is my x1 that's my z uh, x2 so when this link rotates what will happen the angle between these two will change okay now what about the third one the third one again there is a distance of l2 between the z2 and the z3 axis there is no angle between them there is no distance between them i'm assuming that this distance this distance is equal to zero okay so there is no distance there i'm just simplifying and this is my uh, theta three so sorry this theta three this is theta two okay what are the variables the variables here are d1 theta two and theta three okay so this is what we are getting is our uh, dh parameter table now if i make the transformation matrix i can make the transformation matrix for uh, 0 to 1 which is equal to so it is 0 0 d1 and uh, 0 so this is going to be an identity matrix 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 this will be identity matrix because uh, there is no angle the theta is not a variable at all okay now what about uh, on the other side this is 0 0 0 that is 1 what is a a is equal to 0 okay uh, sine alpha is 0 again and we have a distance of cos alpha d which is equal to d1 here now so what is the variable there's only one variable which is here okay what about uh, 1 to 2 the next one 1 to 2 if you look at the row it has l1 distance and there is a theta 2 so l1 and a theta 2 cos 2 minus sine 2 sine 2 cos 2 okay this will become 0 this is 0 then here it is a sine theta sine theta sine alpha is 0 then sine alpha is 0 again here and cos alpha is equal to 1 so it is 1 there and here a is equal to l1 uh, alpha is equal to 0 sine alpha is equal to 0 cos alpha is 1 and d there is no d so this is also a 0 here so, and that is 0 0 0 1 what about the the last one 2 to 3 look at the third one there is an l2 and there is a theta 3 so it will be a replication of this only right so what we are getting here is it will become cos 3 okay. cos 3 minus sine 3 0 a is l2 so it will be l2 here the second row is going to become cos sine theta okay. cos 3 this will become 0 and the last d is equal to 0 there so it will be 0 this will be also 0 and the third one is going to become sine alpha is zero there's a sine alpha there which is zero again and there is cos alpha which is one so it's zero 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 so we have got our three uh, transformation matrices if i multiply now i should be able to get my t zero to three matrix okay i hope you understand how we get this now okay this is just an example to show uh, how we are assigning axis how do we put the z axis the x axis then how do we make a dh parameter table and then how we get those uh, respective matrices multiply them all out and you get your final matrix uh, t zero to one 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Okay. Now let's look at a lot. This was pretty simple. Let's look at a larger manipulator, you know, something like the uh, a real manipulator, which would be a Puma. Let's uh, talk about the Puma manipulator. So this is called the Puma, which was one of the earliest robots made in 1960. So this is the primary universal machine, primary universal machine. for assembly okay so puma stands for primary universal machine for assembly one of the earliest uh, robots made in 1960 by the animation company it is no more in production the company has gone out and uh, it has been bought over by kawasaki and they have changed the design of the robot to so that you don't get the puma robot anymore but this is one of the earliest uh, robots which is covered in almost all the textbooks so we uh, as a basis for studying kinematics.
Okay, so let's uh, look at the Puma robot. Now the Puma robot has six degrees of freedom. It has six T O F degrees of freedom, and uh, it has six revolute joints. Okay. Now uh, let me very quickly draw it here and try to explain. So this is your uh, Puma robot. And this is what the structure of the robot looks like. I'll explain each of the joints one by one. And this is the base. Now the structure of the Puma robot is very similar to that of the human arm. So the first axis is called the waist. So if you look at the human body, so this is our uh, human body. Okay, this is the front view. And then you have your hand here. So this is your shoulder, then you have your hand. Okay. And these are your uh, legs. Okay, so now if you look at the first axis, uh, we, we can rotate about our waist axis, rotate like this, so you can swing your arms across the waist, and this is your rotation actually. So this is also called the waist, and it can rotate like that. Okay, so this is called the waist of the robot. Next is, if this is an axis on this direction, then the arm can go up or the arm can go down. It's like the arm can rotate about that axis, right? So if I look at the side view, or rather if I look at the side view here, okay, this is your side view, then your arm if this is your arm then the arm can go up or it can go down so this is your arm right so it is like it is rotating about if this is an axis then the side view is this one can rotate like that so this is called the shoulder joint so this second axis is called the shoulder so it can rotate about that up or down and just called shoulder okay. next is the elbow so it is like this is an elbow joint and the elbow can be okay so this is your elbow so this is my elbow joint this is also a rotation joint. Now, so we have the wrist, shoulder, elbow, and roll pitch yaw is at the wrist. So we have a roll, pitch, and the yaw axis. Okay, three axes at the wrist. If you look at the human uh, arm, uh, the human, if I just were to explain or give an example here. So this is your hand. Okay, let me draw it sideways. So this is your thumb and you're holding the fingers straight like this then you can rotate about this axis which we call the roll axis so which actually happens at the uh, elbow for the human but for the robot it happens at the wrist so this is my roll this is my pitch it can if this is my axis here it can go up and down so your hand can go up like that or it can go down like this so this is called the pitch axis and it can also rotate about this axis which is called the yaw axis so in your wrist you have three axes which are called the roll pitch and the yaw axis Okay, so wrist, shoulder, elbow, roll pitch, yaw, six degree of freedom manipulator. Now let's assign the axis and uh, look at this. So the first axis is the Z0 and the Z1 axis. So I assign it here and call this the Z0 and the Z1 axis. So this is the shoulder axis. Number two axis is the, this is the waist axis. This is the waist. Second axis is called the, so I assign my Z2 there. Okay, this is called the uh, shoulder axis. Okay, so Z2 has been shown there, it is here, it is shown here. Okay. Z3 is the uh, the elbow axis. And then roll pitch yaw is at the wrist, this is my roll axis, okay, which is the Z4 axis. So Z1 is the waist axis, it can rotate like this. Z2 is the shoulder axis, this is my shoulder, this is my elbow. It's a very good idea if you look at yourself in a mirror, and when you rotate yourself, uh, you turn, uh, about the waist axis then exactly you get the same your waist axis is vertical then if you put your hand up and down it is the shoulder axis third is the elbow if you flex your uh, if you close your elbow move your elbow then it's the elbow axis roll pitch yaw is at the uh, at the wrist so this is my roll axis okay. now at the wrist this is a closer uh, figure of the wrist axis so uh, please note this very carefully now so this part is uh, shown in larger figure there now my third axis was this side that was Z3. Okay. Now Z4 is the roll axis, so it can rotate about this axis. That's our Z4. Okay. Now Z5 is the pitch axis, which is pointing that side. So that's my Z5 axis. Okay. So the arm can go up and down. Okay. So it's like the uh, arm can, uh, not the arm, at the wrist you can move your uh, the palm up and down, so which is my wrist axis. It can go like this. So roll, pitch. And the fifth axis is also here, which is called the Z6, roll, pitch, and yaw. So this is roll, that is pitch, and that is yaw axis. 
okay so now let us look at the axis assignment again z0 z1 is here z2 is here z3 is the elbow axis z4 and z5 and z6 are the same point okay now in the human case the roll axis is at the elbow actually okay. but in the case of the robot it's at the wrist okay please note that now we have to assign we have assigned our z axis next what we need to do is to assign our x axis now please note that z1 and z2 are intersecting axis z0 and z1 are the same axis z1 and z2 are intersecting now we know that if the axis are intersecting then x1 is going to be perpendicular to the plane containing the z's right so this is my z1 so i can put my z0 z1 here i can also put z2 there okay so z1 and z2 are are intersecting so x is perpendicular to the plane containing the z's okay now uh, z2 is this side no z3 is this side. sorry x3 is this side okay now going back to the wrist again so your x3 is this side x4 is so your z3 and z4 are again uh, intersecting axis okay z4 and z3 and they are so your x4 has to be perpendicular to z4 and z3 so x4 is pointing upwards okay now z x4 is this side x5 and x6 are also pointing thatwards okay now this is a little tricky to understand we need to understand the the kinematics of the wrist so in the human arm if you were to draw the human arm okay if i'm drawing my uh, this is my thumb okay so this might th this is my thumb finger okay that's my thumb let me try and explain it this way and uh, suppose you're looking at your left hand and the top is your other fingers so this is your okay let me explain it like this okay so this is your index finger that's your thumb finger okay so uh, you're looking at your left hand for example and this is your wrist not a very good drawing but i guess uh, okay now uh, you're looking at your just a little longer okay now suppose you're looking at your wrist now this is my wrist wrist is here so on the wrist we have an axis which is my roll axis that is this one okay that's my roll axis next is my pitch axis so the hand can go up like this you can imagine that the finger is going up like this okay and your thumb finger is here now so it is going up like that or it can go down like this which is the axis about which it is going up and down just perpendicular to this plane here so that's my pitch axis okay and the and then you can also move your hand about this axis that's called the y-axis okay so we have a roll we have a pitch and we have a y-axis okay please try that on your hand and it will become very clear that what are the three axes so we have a roll pitch and a y-axis okay now these three axes if this is my uh, roll axis then this is my pitch axis or just pointing that side pitch axis is that side and the yo axis is here this is your it's a roll pitch yo but if you assign the z axis z4 z5 and z6 this way then what happens is we cannot make the dh parameter table because you cannot assign your uh, x6 then no. if you assign your z this way you cannot assign your x x6 axis okay because of which what we do is we rotate this z6 and make it same as z4 okay it is as good as saying that my hand is down like this now okay so if you can imagine again the same hand i was drawing there uh, your hand is here now and uh, so your hand is being rotated downwards okay it is like your hand is rot rotated downward about this axis if this is my axis i've rotated it here okay and your hand is down here now okay now if your hand is rotated down then what happens is that the z six axis which was upward so this was my z6 if i rotate what will happen the z6 will come down if you can imagine i hope the z6 which was here has been rotated and it comes down like this and it is pointing in this direction only so your z6 is rotated and it's same as z6 and z4 
okay i hope you uh, visualize you can visualize this so the three axes are intersecting because to get a closed form solution we need this condition but please note that z6 and z4 are in the same direction z4 and z6 are in the same direction but theoretically they all of them are intersecting and they are orthogonal okay uh, but just we we show show it this way which is uh, perfectly fine because you can rotate your wrist and you can align the axis it doesn't matter right so now uh, we have put our z axis and our x axis now what we need to do is to make our dh parameter table okay so we have put our uh, z axis and our x axis now we need to see what are the distances between them before we make our dh parameter table so let's make our dh parameter table now so this is a alpha d and theta so it's one two three four five and six now let's look at uh, z0 and z1 are the same axis origins are same so there's no problem so it's zero zero theta one okay that we have seen now z2 is rotated by 90 degrees about the x-axis so the origins are same so it is zero it is uh, minus 90 it's clockwise rotation this is zero that is theta theta two now z3 is here z2 is there now there is a distance between z2 and z3 how much is the distance it is a2 there's the distance of a2 between there okay so there's a distance uh, a2 there now what is the angle between z2 and z3 there's no angle because they are parallel axis what about the distance between the x-axis now there is a distance here x3 and x2 there is a distance so what is the distance between x2 and x3 if you look at that uh, there is a distance of d3 here d3 is the distance between x2 and x3 so x2 was in this direction x3 is that direction so there is a distance of d3 here and this is my theta 3 what about 3 and 4 now let's go and uh, go back here what about axis 3 and 4 so 3 4 5 6 right so a alpha d theta we have just finished with 3 1 2 3 we have finished here so i'll move 4 5 6 to the next one 4 5 6 is here okay so z3 is here z4 is here they are intersecting axis okay they are in the same direction so what is the now what is the distance between them z4 and z3 there is a distance of a3 okay so we have an a3 distance there what is the angle between them now z3 has been rotated clockwise by an angle of 90 degrees to make it z4 so it's a minus 90 what about d d is the distance between the x-axis now x4 is upward and x3 is here. x3 is here x4 is there so what is the distance between them is that uh, is d4 okay, which is given here and what is angle theta is theta 4 what about the uh, uh, angle between z4 and z5 now z4 and z5 is z4 has been rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degrees and it has become the uh, z5 axis right what is the distance between z4 and z5 no distance because they are intersecting what is the distance in the x-axis distance between the axis they are also intersecting okay what is the angle between them so when there is a rotation of the fourth axis what will happen the uh, that's my z4 this is my z4 and the z5 so if it rotates about this axis what will happen this angle will come here now okay so this will become my theta 5 okay that is my theta 5 axis now what about the sixth axis now z5 is rotated clockwise and it becomes z6 so there is a minus 90 there now okay and what about the distance there is no distance between them because they are intersecting what about the distance in uh, what is the distance between the x-axis again the intersecting axis so there is no distance between them and uh, what is the angle it is theta 6 okay so this is uh, how we make a dh parameter table for this uh, puma robot now this is a little confusing especially the wrist part you need to understand the wrist part please look at your wrist please look at your when you're moving the wrist uh, how does it come to this configuration okay why is it z4 is pretty clear to understand that's the roll axis okay z5 is also clear to understand z5 now z6 is shown here why is it that we are rotating z6 and making same same as here it's like just rotating your arm about this axis okay and pointing it downwards so it's like when you do that your z6 will actually come and point this side and we do that for completing the dh parameter table okay so uh, today we covered 
another a few examples of how to put th parameter table for please practice assigning dh parameter table in different kind of you can look at the textbook which is introduction to robotics you can look at you can look at robot manipulators dynamics and control there are a lot of examples there okay uh, now uh, you need to practice this and this concept of assigning axis and finding the dh parameter table then finding your corresponding matrices should be very very clear okay because from here we move on to forward kinematics and inverse kinematics so unless this is clear we cannot move forward okay now uh, in the case of the puma robot example is given in the introduction to robotics textbook okay please do draw the robot by yourself and please assign uh, axis and then write the dh parameter table if you can do that uh, and it is correctly done then uh, you understand dh parameter tables uh, clearly okay okay so we'll stop here today and we'll continue in the next class on uh, forward kinematics thank you